Welcome to Agile to Agility Podcast with Milan Bayic. Major show alert! The very first value we wrote is individuals and interactions. Let's take this to another level. This is an idea from extreme programming. If, if something is good, turn it up to an extreme. Do it all the time. Who is Richard Kasparovsky? Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, your work? How did you, what was your journey? Maybe just. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, so I am Richard Kasparovsky. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I'm a little goofy and silly like that. Uh, let's see. So I'm a, I'm a writer, a teacher, a coach. Uh, I do a lot of work with teams. Uh, you know, we're, we're calling we're calling this podcast here Agile to Agility. I do a lot of work with Agile. I do a lot of work with uh, with with something called the Core Protocols, and mm -hmm. I, I do a bunch of work with Open Space Open Space Technology. Um, how did I get here? I was a I was a twelve year old kid with a computer in my house, which back when I was twelve years old, that was kind of unusual. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big deal. Huh? It was uh, it was a small computer. It was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It was it was a lot of fun. So I grew up with a computer, um, which which implies a couple of things. One, one is that I was I was better at computers than I was at people. Uh, <laughs> Right, because computers. You're one of those people, huh? I am absolutely one of those people. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm your, I'm your prototypical self-selected programmer kind of person. Mm -hmm. uh, computers are easy; they do exactly what you tell them to do. And when they do something different, it's because you made a mistake and you told it to do something that you didn't intend, but you told it. So it does whatever you tell it, whether whether it's what you intended or not. People, people are. Harder people are interesting. Uh, people are mm -hmm. different, right? So, so I was this kid like all, all the other kids were outside playing baseball, soccer, football, street hockey, whatever. Where I grew up, I grew up in New England, mm -hmm. uh, so street hockey is a real thing. Um, and I was inside playing with a computer or playing piano, making music, doing things that I could do solo that that basically I had total control over. Mm -hmm. Nice. So you said you grew up in New England. I saw. Um... You wrote about it, uh, the word wicked. Um, I have a book <laughs> that's coming up that's called Wicked Leadership. All right, uh, all right. And uh, obviously, we have a connection to New England here where we both know that wicked means something different than uh, <laughs> uh, what it means in most of the uh, uh, world. Uh, so yeah. could you maybe talk about, uh, obviously, you wrote about it, you said, oh, you know, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, so. can you uh, share your thoughts yeah. on the word wicked and oh, sure. what it means so to you? So you're, you did a lot of your growing up in New England as well. So, uh, mm -hmm. so you know when I say wicked, you know what I mean. Um, and the way you're using it in your book title is a little different, or maybe exactly the same. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's uh, it's a little bit different. It has to do with wicked problems. So, yeah, uh, yeah. which comes yeah. from New England too, as uh, as far as I know, it was coined in Massachusetts somewhere. I guess. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, so wicked in, in in the sense that I grew up using it was. Uh, it's a, it's an adjective. It's an enhancer. It it means mm -hmm. very, 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 very wicked, mm -hmm. uh, a wicked, a wicked good time. Uh, there there used to be a there used to be a thing called records, and there used to be a record store here, and their slogan was uh, for a wicked good time, right? So it, it's uh, you, you could you could have a wicked good ice cream cone. Uh, you could uh, you could you could play street hockey with your friends, and it, that that could have been uh, oh, that was wicked. Yeah. the way he scored that goal <laughs> yeah. right? so, it is uh, it, it is interesting i like, I like how, to play with the yeah. word it, it's fine yeah. I, i've 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 um i used to avoid it but, but i've come to embrace mm -hmm. my roots uh and just be, be more natural with uh with the words i say and i actually mm -hmm. like it um i love people's accents this is the you know, the word wicked is part of my accent i love mm -hmm. people's accents i love the differences that we have between each other I love when we say things that are a little different from each other and it, it like tweaks our brains a little bit and we know more mm -hmm. about each other because of the words we're using or the way we use the words. So, mm -hmm. so wicked is one of those words for me. Yeah, it's also cultural, I think. It, has, it carries a lot of meaning with it uh, in an uh, implicit meaning, like in a sense that, you know, we know what it means, but somebody, <laughs> you know, across the globe might be thinking we're crazy. 
I joke with my uh, wife about these words. She grew up uh, in California. So, so when we're driving in the car, we go around rotaries. Uh, uh, and sometimes it's wicked hard to get into the rotary and, and wicked hard to get out. Uh, what else do we do? Oh, when I drink water from the bubbler. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> when I, when I want a bottle of wine, I go to the packy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I love the New package, England. Uh, the package store. Does anybody else call it a package store? I mean, that's what no, we call but it. I'm here. sure they call it something else that we would think maybe <laughs> it's weird. But uh, I just spent the last few years in California, and uh, I do miss. I miss California, but I did miss New England just for that. There's something about New England uh, <laughs> that has it's. Uh, uh, it, it's it's its own low culture and bubble. I was uh, I, I was I was talking to somebody else who grew up uh, uh, around Boston a, a couple of weeks ago, and and we were joking. She was like, "Yeah, I grew up uh, I grew up in the house near the Rotary, just on the other side of the Dunkin' Donuts. No, not that Dunkin' Donuts, the other Dunkin' Donuts." <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, very typical up here. And yeah. uh, I was talking to Kevin Callahan last week, and he was joking at how he's you know, uh, in remote part of Maine, uh, yeah. but for Maine standards, it's nowhere close to remote. So <laughs> it's all relative, I guess. It's all relative. Um, I, I told a friend who lives in Canada, I went on our honeymoon a few years ago and told my friend, uh, yeah, we went on our honeymoon at this place in Northern Quebec. And he's like, where? I'm like, uh, Tremblant. He's like, that's not Northern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so you, you you mentioned you teach and you teach agile software development at uh, Harvard University. Yep. Uh, how is it to teach at university versus when you're teaching public classes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so teaching a, a university course versus teaching a public course or a private class inside a company. Um, I would contrast it more to teaching a private class inside a company. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's it's sort of like a, it's, it's it's also a contrast to teaching a, an open public course. Teaching a university course, especially the, the one that I do, it's it's totally an elective. Uh, nobody has to take mm -hmm. it. It's in the computer science department. People take it because they want to take it. Yeah. That's the difference. People <laughs> take it just because they want to. Uh, nobody, nobody told them that they to. have to. Yeah. Nobody's boss told them that they had to. Nobody's there be begrudgingly. Uh, nobody's, uh, you know, people are just there. They're there because they want to be there. They're totally engaged. They're totally in They're They're, they're, they're doing, they're learning together. They're, there's nothing mm -hmm. distracting them from learning together. Uh, that's, that's the biggest difference. And, and because of that, there's, there's, there's so much positive energy in the, mm -hmm. in the space. And I'll say the space versus the classroom, because we're not always in a physical space anymore. Uh, there's so much more energy in the space, and um, the the learning just just happens. The learning is is so fast, and mm -hmm. and intense. Uh, I think that that's the that's the biggest difference. People are just there because they want to be there, and the learning mm -hmm. happens. How well do you see them adopt? I'm assuming uh, this is undergraduate, or graduate, or uh, what kind of program uh, is this? In the catalog as a graduate level course. Yeah. Um, so from a perspective of software development and, uh, from, you, you know, uh, I'm assuming you're doing, uh, in teaching some of the extreme programming, maybe some mob programming, like what is it, what does the class look like? What's, what's the, uh, uh, how do you, in a sense, uh, what is the, uh, agenda or yeah. the, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so for Let's see, for starters, for, for anybody watching or listening, uh, you can visit agilesoftwarecourse.org. Uh, and it, it's, it's, it's everything about the course, including the syllabus. So you can see the whole syllabus, mm -hmm. the, the list of topics. There's, there's a button that will take you to, to Harvard's mm -hmm. website where you can actually register. Um, but it's, it's what you might call full stack Agile. It's mm -hmm. everything about Agile in a semester. Oh, and the summer version of the course, the semester is three weeks. So it's, it's, it can be really, really short and intensive. Yeah. Uh, everything about Agile, the, the people stuff, the business stuff, the tech stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll start with just what is Agile? Oh, and, and also every learning segment is activity-based. We, we learn by doing. 
versus mm-hmm. learning by listening to somebody give speeches. You know, mm-hmm. that, that old fashioned <laughs> style of, of learning yeah. somebody at, on a, at a podium at the, you know, the bottom of a big lecture hall. We don't do that. Uh, it's all learning by doing. So um, activities to learn about agility, activities to, to learn about scrum, activities to learn about teaming and, and, and high performance teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all the technical things, activities to learn about the technical things, uh, pairing, mobbing, test-driven development, uh, working with legacy code, continuous integration, mm-hmm. DevOps, everything about Agile, full stack agility. And people are assuming open to that because like uh, I've taught uh, at universities to undergraduate, graduate, and like it's different, like at least the, the courses I've taught are more like, you know, the Scrum Master course mm-hmm. and... Um, like you have kids that never managed anything or that they were never part of any, you know, regular process, you know, it's mostly, you know, 17, 18 year olds. And uh, it, like their perspective is different. And I'm interested, like how open are people to full stack development, to mob programming? You know, some of the things that we see in organizations where somebody has been a developer for 20 years, they're not as open to those ideas or those practices as, as somebody that's <laughs> yeah, there's been, different yeah. levels of uh, people's, we'll say, readiness yeah. uh, to, 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 to try the ideas. Um, one thing, you know, you've, you've done some teaching at, at university as well. Um, the private teaching that we do or the, the industry teaching we do, the public courses that, that we do, mm-hmm. that's wicked dumb. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody should have to learn yeah. this stuff uh i mean yeah. okay we, we should we, we we all can continue learning we all we all can uh learn new things as we as we grow and age mm-hmm. and have new experiences and, and we we can bring those those new those new learnings back into our lives and into our work mm-hmm. but this this agile stuff uh the Agile Manifesto is 20 years old now. Scrum is older than that. XP is older than that. This stuff goes back 25, maybe 30 years. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's nothing new here. People, I'm going to use a should. People should know this when they leave their university program. If, you're, if you've got a degree in computer science or software engineering or anything related to the business of, of technolo- tech, uh, digital product development, tech product development, you should know this when you come out of your program. Uh, if you don't know this coming out of your program, there's something, there, there's a gap in your, in your university program. Uh, so this, this is a dream, a dream of mine, that people would just know this stuff coming out of their CS degree or their IT degree, whatever, whatever they're studying. Um, That's interesting that because I... Uh, that people can just know this stuff. They don't have yeah. to learn it afterward. It's not, it's not a big deal to introduce agility into your company because people just know it when they join your company. Exactly. And that's what Mike Cohn said. I interviewed Mike Cohn uh, last week, and he said the exact same thing, which uh, resonated with me, which is like, you know, that's what we need, like in a sense. And uh, I spoke with... Uh, I think uh, one of the either Gartner or uh, Gartner or Tobias Mayer, but they're also like at the other hand saying, look, you know, if you look at the history of things, you know, 20, 30 years, you know, is not a lot of time. So we have to be patient with this stuff too. Um, and we are seeing more and more like last, at least last five years, I've seen more universities more. So like the next 10 years look promising from that standpoint. And maybe we're just a little impatient and uh, we want (laughs) everything, you know, uh, tomorrow, but I'm seeing a lot of progress uh, in that space. Maybe this is something that you you alluded to this as you were asking the question. Um, There is a difference between teaching these ideas to younger people. Uh, versus mm-hmm. teaching it to people who are already uh, working in industry. Um, you, I, I'm sure you, you do this in your courses. Everybody does this. We start a class about Agile or Scrum by making the case that waterfall, blah, 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 doesn't work that well, blah, blah, blah. And here's Agile and here's Scrum and blah, 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 <laughs> and everything's better. The first time I did that to a group with a group of younger people, they were like, <laughs> "Exactly, like what are you talking about?" 
Well, really, it was like they were like, so what? Yeah. <laughs> I, First time I did that, they're like, what's waterfall? What's agile? <laughs> like in a sense, like you know, yeah. they they have they're, no. It, it's a little bit of that. There's there there's no objection that you have mm -hmm. to attempt to overcome uh, when you're teaching younger people. It's just this is agile. This is Scrum. This is this is pair programming blah 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 We're, let's just learn the stuff and and, and for mm -hmm. the most part they just want to learn the stuff and try it out and yeah. do it oh and, and here, here's yeah. another one when, I, when i'm teaching people the, the various technical skills any of these skills really it, that they use every single one of them doesn't really matter right but mm -hmm. okay so people are resistant to pair programming and that that even comes from the way university programs work today if if you're if you get caught doing your homework with somebody else that's cheating <laughs> so that means pair programming yeah. is cheating uh but okay so people are just resistant we grew up like like me self-selected kind of uh uh introvert loner kind of person i loved playing with computers more than playing with other people uh okay not not so much anymore i like i like yeah. people more now than i like <laughs> computers um but for people who like being alone, you know, the, still a lot of us are drawn to working with computers and uh, we just don't want to have to write code with another person at the same time. Okay, mm -hmm. so we go from being a solo programmer to now we're learning pair programming. Whew, that's a big step. I, I will, okay, I'm open to learning this here in the classroom with you, Richard, but I'm never gonna do this at work or in my other, in my other courses. And then we, then we take it up another level to mobbing together, like in a group of five writing code together. And it's like, <laughs> once they do that, they're like, uh, I could never do that at work or in my other courses, but, but pair programming, that's not so crazy. I could do that every day. <laughs> uh, humans are interesting, right? In a sense that, you know, just, uh, it's all about perspectives and like mm -hmm. a lot of times we don't know till we try it. So yeah. It is and anything, uh, new, and, anything new is hard. Anything that's different from what we had just been doing, mm -hmm. we automatically reject it. It's the way we are as humans. Uh, there's some, mm -hmm. some news. My, my, my wife loves knitting. There's this, there's this knitting website that has a huge, huge community. They even made political news during, during the Trump era <laughs> uh, because their community is so big that it actually was important. Um, mm -hmm. They changed their UI. And the whole knitting community went nuts just because it was different. It, you know, it's, yeah. For the most part, it's better than the previous UI. Of course, it has its little, it has some new bugs that they introduced, mm -hmm. but the community went nuts mostly because it was different from mm -hmm. what they had been used to. And, and that's the way that we're, that's just how we are as humans. Whenever we encounter something different, it's hard. Yeah. So the core protocols are different. Um, what are the call protocols, maybe for those that are not familiar? Okay. Yeah, uh, let's see. So um, imagine that you could watch some really amazing team at work. Really any group of people, uh, two or more people. This is how I define team. Maybe it's because I started as a, as a solo loner kind of person. <laughs> Two or more people, that's a team, aligned with a common goal, especially. You have to be aligned mm -hmm. with a common goal. Otherwise, uh, maybe two or more people is just a, a coffee party or something. I don't know. Uh, two or more people aligned with a co common goal. Although, if enjoying great coffee and pastry is your common goal, maybe you're a team. Exactly. I was going to say, you know, you could be. <laughs> I miss great coffee and pastry <laughs> yeah. during the COVID era. I know. Uh, so imagine you could watch a really great team. And imagine mm -hmm. you could watch a lot of really great teams and that you watched so many really great teams that it became apparent that there were some common patterns mm -hmm. and you, you could sort of like identify what those patterns are between uh, amongst all of those really awesome teams uh, and teach those behaviors back to other people and other teams so they could also be awesome. Uh, that's what that's what these things called core protocols are. It's a set mm -hmm. of behaviors learned by observing really great teams uh, and mm -hmm. and written back so that written down so that you could read them, you can learn them, you can adopt them, you can use them with your team. You can make them your team agreements. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are they are 
different from yeah. normal from from default team behaviors. Well, and, and that kind of makes sense because average behaviors that are not an average team is not the best team. Mm -hmm. most, team, most teams are average. You know, it turns out most of us are average in most of the things we do. Although we all say <laughs> we're above average, most of us are average. Uh, the average yeah. person says they're above average. <laughs> it's a fact. Um, so most of us don't do all of these sorts of things all the time, mm -hmm. and they're as simple as like uh, share how you're feeling with each other. That's something that most of us don't do most of the time. Uh, share how you're feeling with with the people around you you know just just tell people i feel glad i'm really happy to see you today Neil. it's mm -hmm. it's so great it's been a while and it's nice that we've got some some video connecting us and we can see each other's faces and we've got mm -hmm. i can see you nod and smile and it's it's great and um i do miss in person though uh, I miss in person too. Uh, i'm sad that we're not actually in that in that room that you've synthesized behind you. <laughs> that would be even uh, better if we could, if we could be, uh, if we could be a team of two or more people enjoying some coffee and pastry together and, and shooting Dunkin' Donuts, yeah, together. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> uh, what led you down the road to the core protocols? How, how did you get introduced? Yeah, so, so I told the story about being uh, this, this like loner solo kid with a computer, you know, playing music, playing piano, whatever, by mm -hmm. myself. I was a really good, really good programmer. I, I, it was just naturally easy to me. And, and my skills grew and grew as, as I mm -hmm. grew. I, I did this as work. Uh, I was a, sort of a natural people leader because I was so good at the tech things that I had, uh, I had credibility. People, people believed me when I said, when I answered a question, said, this is, this is how we should do it. I was mm -hmm. usually right. Or maybe something about my voice and body language. At least it, it seemed like I knew what I was saying <laughs> and people <laughs> went along with it and followed me. I got, as, as I, as I rose as a, a, a technical person and a leader of technical groups, I got more and more interested in and maybe this this new problem for me to solve was not how to, how to make how to write the code. The new problem was, uh, well, not how how can I be the best at writing the code. The new problem was how could we, uh, mm -hmm. how could we be the best at writing the code? And how can, then and then it was like how could we even know what code we should be writing? Like what's the problem we're trying to solve? Not just not mm -hmm. just writing great code, which is amazing Important. fun yeah, on yeah. its own. It's amazing yeah. fun on its own. I love that stuff. But what code should we be writing? Yeah. And, and that led me into various things. It led me into agility, Scrum, extreme programming. We started, you know, the extreme programming book came out around 1999 or 2000 or something. Uh, we started mm -hmm. reading that and using those ideas. Uh, Scrum, we started reading, reading about Scrum and using those ideas. It, I got more and more interested in, in how could we be our best together? Mm -hmm. So that was that was agility, Scrum, all, all the different parts of agility. Uh, that was learning about emotional intelligence. That was learning about how people work. Uh, the tough part. The, and it turns you consider out the people the, the, most the part of the part. <laughs> yeah. The most interesting part. Um, mm -hmm. it, people are way more interesting than machines. Uh, and, and well, right now, maybe, uh, huh? <laughs> well, I don't know. A life, a life amongst people is, is, yeah. is so much richer than a mm -hmm. life without people. You know, this, this is how, this is how viruses spread. We need to be around each other mm -hmm. and, and a virus will take advantage of that. Humans need to be near each other. We need each other. We, yeah. even when we know that we're going to get infected by a deadly virus, we have to get together. We need to. This is this is what yeah. humans do. We we need other humans around us. We can't not be around other humans. And um, life life together is so much richer than life mm -hmm. sitting alone writing code by yourself. <laughs> so just to build on that, then how uh, as far as how do you, as far as core protocols yeah. and uh, uh, maybe uh, who influenced that like as far as uh, i believe it's mccarthy or yeah, yeah, yeah could you maybe talk about 
that a little bit and sure sure yeah. uh, you sure, wrote so. two books on the core, core core protocols too so how how did they influence your work and what oh, it, it, in fact the core protocols is their work the there yeah the, and yeah. uh i'm one of the people fortunate enough to have uh to have befriended them uh, learned about it from them, and uh, I get to share the ideas, spread the ideas through the world, and, and, and help other people put them into put them into practice. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that that's a lot of what I do. I I don't know that I've I, I've probably invented something or come up with some new idea at some point. Um, yeah. But I think one of the things I'm really good at is taking other people's ideas or finding research. Uh, mm -hmm. that other people have produced and helping people apply it to themselves and their teams. And that that's, I guess that's what a t teacher does. That's what a coach does. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's one of the things I, I, I guess I'm good at and that I really enjoy doing. Uh, the, 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 the full origin story of, of Core Protocols uh, is that Jim and Michelle McCarthy were working on, a, on a, an average or worse team at Microsoft. Uh, yeah. They they took a few steps to make the team better, uh, but they were sort of like shooting into the wind. They didn't really know how to make the team better. Turns out the team was amazing. It was, uh, I, I say a high performance team is a team that's measurably better, objectively better than other teams that do similar work. Their mm -hmm. team was that. It was like the best in their, in their niche. Um, they kind of felt like they got lucky, like, like which is which is my experience with so, so many of my past teams i just got lucky mm -hmm. we didn't really know what we're doing we, we did a few things on purpose but mostly it was just Luck. a random group of people and uh it turned out we liked each other enough that we spent enough time together that we got some good results happening mm -hmm. uh they left microsoft and opened what they describe as a team research lab and they invited some groups of people into the lab they would give them an assignment, oh, sort of like a work assignment and a deadline, mm -hmm. five days, and not do anything else, just watch. So it was observational research. Uh, they did this um, enough times with enough teams that they started to notice patterns in the teams that were successful at the assignment. And then they turned it into like experimental research. The variable they introduced mm -hmm. is, what if we taught these behaviors back, what if we taught these behaviors to the teams that entered our lab? So mm -hmm. they did that, and every time they did that, those teams were successful. They replicated that with real teams in industry. Other people did it with real teams in industry, so the variable mm -hmm. wasn't just the McCarthys. The variable was these behavior patterns that, that other teams could, could learn and adopt. Uh, and they wrote about them. They called them protocols, uh, mm -hmm. where protocol in this sense is... Uh, a description of uh, a script, a, a, a team agreement, a, um, a, a contract maybe, of, of how we behave together. Mm -hmm. uh, a protocol in this sense is like a medical protocol, uh, a healthcare protocol, like like uh, surgeons wear masks in the mm -hmm. operating room and, and, they, and all the people in a, in a, doing a procedure communicate very clearly, everybody's role is clearly defined and so on. Uh, also like a diplomatic protocol uh, mm -hmm. a way of behaving so that we achieve our mutual goals and there are no misunderstandings, right? So that's what protocols are. And these are like team agreements that you could adopt with your team to But I think also more process. than that, like in a sense, like the way that I see it is um, like a belief too. Like for instance, you know, positive bias, yeah. right? Um, it's an agreement, but it's also belief. You, you have to believe in that and yeah. also value positive advice and then you know your behaviors will reflect that uh belief. yeah yeah it, it's interesting i sometimes i don't know what comes first the the mindset or the behavior <laughs> yeah. uh with enough practice at the behavior the mindset does change mm -hmm. uh with enough practice at saying yes to people, your mindset does change versus yeah. automatically saying no. You, you build a new reflex. It's it's a kind of deliberate practice. One uh, influences which, the other, right? So it's it like does, yin and yeah, yang. <laughs> yeah. there, there's a feedback loop there. They they amplify each other. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, and I, I learned some of these things from the, the, the 
community of agilists like you and me uh stop saying but start saying and yeah right and if you catch yourself saying no you catch yourself saying but and then you go Ooh, yes and right and the mm -hmm. more you practice it the more you become aware of it so your mindset changes the more you're aware of it the more you catch yourself not doing it mm -hmm. so your behaviors change yeah and, and you so, start to build up this this kind of uh, bias toward positive outcomes, which mm -hmm. I, I think actually is the, the foundation of, of of success, of great teams, of, of success at an individual level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and that's you know one of the things that I want to ask you is you talked about awareness, right? And I was uh, uh, maybe a month ago talking to this guy, Greek guy, Zach, um on a beach down in la jolla in uh, san diego and my wife was playing with my son and his daughter and we're just you know joking around and uh they, we have some common interests and things like that and after my wife said you know how many times you said no but oh <laughs> because i told her i teach you know people we do the improvs in classes yeah. and i'm like i had no idea Wow. Like I wasn't really, I was having a good time talking to him, but I, I wasn't aware, you know, I didn't practice awareness. Uh, <laughs> uh, so what That's do you funny. tell teams? I mean, awareness is core of a lot of things, including the core protocols. How, yeah. how do we become more aware? What, what is typically your suggestion? <laughs> um, how, how can we practice and get better at yeah, awareness. yeah, I, I call it self-awareness, uh, mm -hmm. and it's one of the one of the building blocks of, of great teams. Probably one of the building blocks of great anything self team product. Mm -hmm. uh, deliberate practice, right? So deliberate mm -hmm. practice is finding the things you need to practice, finding the things that you haven't already mastered, mm -hmm. and practicing them. Uh, I do. I've done a lot of this in my life with uh with athletics i did a lot of deliberate mm -hmm. practice uh, practicing martial arts uh i do it with music I, i'm back to piano after 30 years off piano i'm doing a lot of deliberate practice i'm at <laughs> i'm at hannon's exercise number 29 out of 60 and i'm just blowing through the deliberate practice the the finger training uh -huh. and i can play piano better than ever in my life it's it's amazing and it's a lot of it is because of the deliberate practice in physical activities we call it building muscle memory mm -hmm. right so that your body just knows what to do without having to stop and think about it if you're if you're sparring with somebody in martial arts you, you can't just stop mm -hmm. because they'll kick you or whatever <laughs> they'll, they'll score the point if you're doing some sort of point uh. sparring you, if you're playing music you can't just stop and think mm -hmm. about what note to play next you, you just play and the way your body just knows, it's, it's the muscle memory. It's from the deliberate practice. The same mm -hmm. thing with anything, that any, any complex skill that you hope to acquire, uh, even this, this positive, this, this, this bias toward positivity. It's complex to, to change the way our brains work. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you change it? Deliberate practice. You find the right, the right, right way to practice it, you find the, the gaps that you need to work on, you find the right feedback loop to notice when you're doing it right or doing mm -hmm. it not quite the way you want and make the right adjustments. Uh, a really easy example is, is this emotion check-in I mentioned earlier. How do you practice that emotion check-in in a deliberate way? Every time you get together with your team, you do mm -hmm. it. You, you share how you're feeling with each other. That's how you practice it until it becomes second nature and then you can just do it without thinking do it without I, thinking it comes from you just uh, test driven development how do we how do we do that we do deliberate practice mm -hmm. uh, so that by the time you get to writing your your real production code for work you just do it that way you don't have to think about it you just mm -hmm. do it you've built the 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 metaphorical muscle memory and mm -hmm. it's just how you do it that just remind me, like, you know, you could do a lot of things, you know, uh, I, I joke around, but you can do it with your families too, right? So even with your significant other, <laughs> checking in, talking about how you feel is probably going to strengthen that connection and that relationship, right? Um, 
So, uh, so it does apply. Yeah, we, we can say probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, no, but it's interesting. You know, we talk about work and we try to separate work and life. But a lot of this, yeah. you can't really separate the same thing. It's the same thing. Uh, your best work team is an mm -hmm. example. Well, a work team is a, a relationship with a group of other people. Mm -hmm. Your best work and team is, if you, if, you, if you have a best work team, then you have had a best relationship. And if you've had a best you know, relationship outside of work, everything that you're doing in that relationship that made it the best, you can take to your work team. Mm -hmm. A work team is a relationship, uh, you know, uh, anything you do in your non-work team, you and your wife, you and your family, uh, mm -hmm. you can take skills and ideas from the best parts of your work and bring it into that as well. Mm -hmm. There's no, you're the same person, whether you're at work or not at work. So mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's, there really is a lot of difference. times. Yeah. The work forces us to almost, you know, at least in the past, especially to, you know, uh, check in when you go into the building and be somebody yeah. else than what you are outside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, connection, like deep in connections, uh, is also something that's part of, uh, core protocols, but how do you deepen connections in today's virtual environment? Uh, I'm assuming that's a little bit different, right? Um, it's a little different yeah. and it's mostly the same. Yeah. Uh, you and I can share how we're feeling right now mm -hmm. and it totally works. We're, we're missing our complete set of senses, right? I can see yeah. you, but I can't see all of you. So mm -hmm. maybe I have half a sense of sight now. Uh, I can hear you, but I can't hear all of you. There's a little bit mm -hmm. of, there's some signal processing. I can't hear your voice as if we were in the same room. It's a little different. You have, you have yeah. good audio gear. I have decent audio gear. We can, we can hear each other pretty accurately, good, but not yeah. completely. Uh, there's no sense of smell. There's no sense mm -hmm. of touch. We, we're losing a lot of our senses that we would have if we were together. And yet we can still connect our brains and hearts. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I, we could share how we're feeling as an easy example. We could share with each other with, with enough self-awareness if we knew. Uh, we, we could share what we really care about. What's the most important thing in my life? What's the most important thing in your life? We could mm -hmm. ask each other big questions. We could have a big talk kind of conversation mm -hmm. and really and we are having a big talk kind of conversation. We, we can really connect with each other mm -hmm. uh, and, and we know when it's happening. I can't, I can't tell whether it's happening for you. I know it's happening for yeah. me because I feel it. No, I know. Right yeah. Now, and right and that's, now, I feel it happening. I know it's happening, uh, at least on my side. And that's what I, I said, like, you know, you before. It's happening. That's the only way I can know because uh, as humans, we, we, we communicate at least 50% using words. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we are losing some of our communication because we're not physically present with each other. But I feel it right now. I feel like we're, mm -hmm. we're connected at, you know, and we can get geeky about it and call it like at really high bandwidth or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel it right now. Yeah. And that's why, like, I, I feel the same way. And the reason, like, before I started recording, I said, you know, the reason that I started this podcast is like, I miss people. I miss talking to Richard. I miss seeing Richard. I miss seeing these people or, you know, opportunities to meet somebody that I didn't. So like, you know, when I was making a list of who I want to talk to, you know, I was like, oh, Richard, <laughs> I haven't, <laughs> I haven't spoken to Richard in a long time. I was and like, that, that's uh, in your, your podcast title. It's like agile to agility because I wanted to talk to Richard. <laughs> that, that's the, that's the slogan. You're, you're, uh, you're big. You're one of the people that I thought I was like, what would be a good way to talk to people, record it, share it and see if Business. anybody else is interested so, in, uh, in, uh, in, you know, hearing uh, what, what we ha what we're talking about. So yeah. it's uh, we'll see how how it goes, but uh, that, that's <laughs> that's the intent behind uh, what Milan's doing here. Yeah. Um, how do we amplify teams' awesomeness? You talk about awesome teams. We, you know, we've talked about it in the past. Uh, what are some of the things that you help teams do to become awesome? Yeah, I guess wicked, um... wicked awesome. <laughs> Wicked. Awesome. <laughs> you want a wicked good team? What do you do? Uh, well, for 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 any kind of team, uh, you know, I got interested in this these core protocol stuff and emotional intelligence and safety and these ideas mm -hmm. because they they just apply to any group of people. Um, 
any 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 group of people you care about and, and i often say it like that you know as i i, I teach a class mm -hmm. on this as i go through the class it, it turns it it transitions from talking about your work team to mm -hmm. just talking about any group of people you care about because that, that that's actually what what we're talking about a group of people mm -hmm. you care about um you can practice, you can do deliberate practice to get into the state. You could pick up one idea and try it and, and sort of, I realized yesterday, I used to talk about move the needle to the right, right? Like you're driving a car and the, the accelerator needle. Yeah. But we don't have a needle that moves to the right in, the, in our car anymore. It's just a digital readout. You can make the number go bigger. <laughs> you can make the team a little bit better every day. You can make your best group, you can make your favorite group of people a little bit better every day. Uh, just try one of these ideas, like like explicitly sharing how you feel uh, all the time, not just when you're mad about something. All the time, you could be happy about something and share it. You don't. It doesn't just have to be. I'm mad about the way you left the the breadcrumbs near the toaster. Well, okay, but if, if you only tell me that you're mad about things, then all I hear is that you're mad at me about things. I never hear that you like me. Share how you're feeling all the time. Uh, oh. This is an idea from extreme programming. If, if something is good, turn it up to an extreme. Do it all the time. 